Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Oh, my God. Uh, let me know. Can you hear me? No, that's my calendar popping up. Can you hear me? Unlike last night when I was online. Hi, can you guys hear me? Let me know. Yes or no. <laughs> Unlike yesterday. Yay! <laughs> okay. So, of course, like yesterday, I was wearing a totally cute outfit and I had everything placed just right and I had been preparing for our program and then the sound wasn't working. Today we have sound. I'm dressed like I have been gardening all day, which I have been. And um, I'm everything is piled up. So, um, you know, we'll just kind of wing it. Um, so as a reminder, here you go. You see this beautiful mask behind me? This was made for me by this amazing uh, farmer in Mexico. <laughs> Here we go. So um, this is, um, as I told you, they do a lot of work with animal spirits and spirit guides in Mexico. It's not just for the shamans or for the healers, everyone. You know, they're a very, uh, in at least where I hang out in the mountains, it's a very indigenously uh, connected culture. Um, you know, and I mentioned it because the first bit of work we're going to do tonight is a uh, scrying with a smoky mirror, doing dream time vision with a smoky mirror. And hi, everyone. Um, so we'll give a moment while we're waiting for everyone to come on. But I want to tell you a little bit about um, Mexico um, because the first work we're going to do is, where's my book? Oh, I took it upstairs. Dang it. All right, you guys, I am so sorry to do this, but I was reading my book. I left it upstairs. I'm going to be back in like 20, 30 seconds. <laughs> Okay, who timed me? I hope that was quick. Sorry about running away. But I really wanted to show this to you. This book, The Toltec Secret by Sergio Gagne. I, I have a funny story to tell you about this. So, um, as you see, it's in a black circle. This is a smoky mirror. And I'm so disorganized after piling everything yesterday. I have a smoky mirror here somewhere. Ah, here we go. Here we go. And you see this? Look at this. This is, <laughs> that's so cool. This is black obsidian. Okay, so it's from lava. It's volcanic. And of course, Mexico was originally formed by volcanoes. All of Mexico is volcanic. Um, and because most of Mexico... Okay, I'm going to leave the long geologic story aside. Fascinates me, probably not too thrilling for all of you. 
but the magma cooled very slowly over a long period of time, like millions and millions, billions of years ago. And um, because it cooled so slowly, the ground there, it's not like in Hawaii, where the uh, the volcano is erupting all the time in a tropical environment, and it pretty quickly turn quickly geologically speaking, uh, turns into lush soil. In Mexico, it cooled very slowly, and it erupted for such a long time that the ground there is really really hard, and the rocks are really bouldery you get huge chunks of obsidian, which is volcanic glass. So they take obsidian and polish it into a mirror. How cool is that? That is so cool. I feel like we should go into there. And that's what you do, actually. You go into it in Toltec Dreamtime. And then on the back of this one, it's spirally. So I can look at it and I see my reflection but it's not a complete reflection. It's not like when I look in this mirror. I mean, you guys are seeing it that way because the lights are on it in the computer, but when I look at it, it looks very shadowy, very dark and shadowy, very dark. Like I'm looking into another world, another world. And if I space my eyes out, I get visions, the like of which I'm not gonna get here where in this mirror where it's so clear like i mean you can see you can see when i hold these two up side by side the comparison okay and if i turn them away from like you can see one is very bright and clear the other one is a little more dark and shadowy and oh here okay you can see my reflection oh that's so cool okay you see my reflection and the difference between the clear mirror and the shadow mirror, the smoky mirror, all right? So if I'm going to be connecting with people who have passed, I can go either way. But if I'm going into dream time, I'm gonna use the smoky mirror. If I'm gonna connect with ancient gods, I'll probably use the smoky mirror. If I wanna connect with my, you know, with, um, well, well, we'll deal with this one in the Phantasmagoria because there are ways of dealing with the clear mirror in bright light and there's ways of dealing with it in dim light. And in dim light, you bring it a little closer to the concept of the smoky mirror. However, um, the purpose is different. So we will be dealing with both of these concepts tonight. I am so excited. Um, and boy, there's so much. I wish we had a whole day just for this. I mean, honestly, our time together, we're just gonna get a little taste as we chefs call an amuse-bouche. Amuse-bouche is when the customers arrive in the restaurant and you greet them with a tray that has, or if they sit down, you bring a plate with, it's not even an hors d'oeuvre, it's, a very, very small bite of something extraordinary that tantalizes the mouth. A mousse bouche, you're amusing the mouth, you're entertaining the mouth. And today, tonight, we're doing a mousse bouche with mirror work. Like we could do a week long program on this and I'd still say it's not enough time. Um, Although if we're allowed to, you know, ever be in human contact again, I'd be happy to do a week long uh, or a weekend program playing with mirrors because it's cool. So, <laughs> um, one of the first things we need to recognize for all of this to work is there's no separation between realities. There is no separation between sleeping and dreaming, sleeping and not dreaming, awake and not dreaming, awake and dreaming. It is all the same. And there's no separation between us and the gods, between us and the angels, between us in 3D and our soul in energetic. There's no time. There's no difference between the time of us here and now and our souls doing whatever. 
and there's no difference between us here and now and the ancient gods. It is all happening at once, but we created time so that we could manage this 3D existence. But when you work with mirrors, you return to the concept that we are all energy. I once did a meditation uh, ceremony many years ago under the support of one of my teachers where I went to a past life that was thousands of years ago, a past life that had died in trauma. And I went in dream time. So it means I went into meditation, but I allowed myself to leave the 3D structure and go into a, tr a dream time situation where I was, I went to a cave that had uh, rocks were sitting and a fire. It was ancient, ancient, ancient place. And I sat there and I invited this past life who had died in trauma in ancient Greece to come and sit with me. I spoke to this life we discussed the traumas this life had had. This life had never left earth. This life was a ghost. So my soul kept incarnating, but this life had never returned to the soul. It had been haunting the planet all that time from then to now and haunting every life I'd lived from then to now. When you have a life that dies in trauma, that trauma is still there with you with every life you live. And that life will be there kind of like a voyeuristically being a Debbie Downer for whatever is going on. So this life and I negotiated, I explained to this life, like all the amazing things we've done from that life to now, we got to know each other. We developed a very good relationship until eventually after several years, that life felt ready to return and join the soul and is not very happy. You know, we're still in touch, of course. Um, so the work that I do with this is through getting into a hypnotic state while maintaining my lucid sense while being in a dream time reality. Um, the crystal ball work that we did the last few days you know, or sessions, that works for it. But working with a smoky mirror is a great way to do this. Or working with a regular mirror in a dim light. Really, really helpful to, for this kind of work when you need to really connect with, talk with, and negotiate with, or plan things with someone who's not physical. It does not have to be your past life. It can be anyone who's not physical, including angels, collectives, it can be someone you know who passed, or it could be someone who was alive, who's no longer alive. You may not even know who they are, but they decide that now they want to work with you. And then uh, you have a name, you have all this information, you got this buddy that you think maybe is your imaginary friend. And then later you talk with some of your peers when they'll go, you don't know who that is? Open a history book and you'll look and you'll realize and you're like reading, you're like, oh my God, this is my friend. Wait, wait, they got this part wrong. This part is inaccurate. I'm going to have to check with my friends as to what's going on, why they would have been misrepresented that way. And you will be correct. And the history books will be wrong on those details. So this is the power of the smoking mirror and the phantasmagoria. Um, and for those of you who are like a little like, wait, what? You lost me at sentence two? Like, I, I'm just trying to hang on with this crazy ride. Remember, everything is energy. We are very dense energy. Everything is energy. So this is my theremin. If you've ever heard the Beach Boys song, Good Vibration, the wee sound that's played by a theremin the entire original star trek series with you know uh captain kirk and uh spock and all of them the entire theme tune for that that's done on a theremin this is how you play a theremin
A ceramin is an antenna hooked to this awesome little machine, similar to like an electric keyboard, except there's no keyboard. Your hands waving in the air. On this left side, when I bring my hand closer, it becomes more quiet. When I move my hand away, it becomes louder. And on the right side here, you know what? Let's see if no, there's a little thing here that lets you know what note is playing. E. And I can. There you go. <laughs> so this is a theremin. Here's the thing. A theremin is energy. All it is is taking the energy of the prop between my hand. This is picking up on the energy of my hand. When my hand is far away, it plays a certain note. The closer my hand gets, it's changing the notes based on the energy receptor. All right. So I mentioned this because this, you know, when I say everything is energy, some of you have, have like met with me when I have my aura camera and I photograph auras, that's the energy we radiate. And here I am playing with an instrument that the only way to make music is for it to pick up on the energy I'm radiating. So it's pretty cool stuff. It is pretty cool stuff. Um, so for the rest of today, just remember this, before you come to life, you plan out your life, you go and you meet with other souls and so say to them, when I go to life, can you be with me as my mother or my father or my sibling or my friend or my protagonist, you know, oh, hey, you're going to be. I noticed that you plan on being an elementary school teacher who inspires students. I want to make sure that you're my teacher to inspire me. Oh, hey, I noticed in this life you plan on being really, really mean and take advantage of people. At a certain point, I need to be taken advantage of. Let's make a soul contract that we cross paths. Like you set all this stuff up and then you come into life. You don't remember what you set up and uh you don't remember you're an eternal being and everything goes a little bit haywire some things go as planned some things don't go as planned there are times in what in your life when you feel like something was supposed to happen but it didn't you know so that's just the way it all works but while you're in life your soul and all of your past lives and the energy of your future lives are up there and they're ready to advise you. They're ready to guide you. Your guardian angel is there. Whatever mentors and guides that you normally work with are there, ready to guide and help you. People you know in life who pass away and they go off, they're ready to guide. You know, so there's like so many non-physical beings who are here to help and when we're working with the mirrors it's a way of helping get out of our head it's a tool to help connect with a past life someone you love who passed maybe someone you love it's not always about you maybe someone you love who passed who wants to share a message because they miss you or because um they need help with something or they want to set you on the path to help someone else with something like 
there's all kinds of reasons why we get these messages. And um, sometimes we don't even know what they mean. You know, like you are told you're driving and you get a message, don't take that road, take this road. It's a few minutes longer, but take it. So you take that road, you never know why you should have, you know, and it turns out maybe if you'd gone on that road, someone would have crashed into you and you would have died, but you would never know that. So go forward with trust and faith. Um, <laughs> if you hear my family back there, uh, they're debating who's going to take our dog for a walk. <laughs> So, um, because uh, we're dealing with with the uh, Dreamtime Toltec, this is a wonderful book. I totally recommend reading it. I'm going to tell you first the story of how I came upon this book. A friend of mine um, who, she was born with full sight and full connection, but it has nothing to do with how she really lives her life. She um, accepts like anytime I call her and I ask, what's going on with this or that? She's like so tapped in, um, but she's not like a professional healer or teacher. Um, and she does not spend her time pursuing this kind of stuff. So whenever she gets a message and passes it to me, I know it's a real deal because she has no idea what it means. And she has, she just knows this is what I'm supposed to tell you. And it's always accurate. She called me and she said, you need to work with a smoking mirror. And I said, I have no idea what that is. Why are you telling me this? She said, I don't know. Some non-physical beings, I think they were angels. I, actually, I'm not the one who, re, I'm the one who doesn't remember. She probably remembers very well. Came and told me that you need, I need to call you and tell you to work with a smoking mirror. And I said, okay, what is a smoking mirror? And she said, I don't know. Uh, but it, you need to study the, the wisdom of the Teo Tolteca. And I said, the Teo Tolteca, what's that? She said, I don't know. I'm just telling you what they told me. And I said, well, that sounds like Toltec. So let me look. And I went on, did a search engine, Toltec, Smoking Mirror, and this book popped up. And I'm like, that's a thing? Oh, my God, that's so cool. That's a thing. This is the practice of working with dream time. Here's the thing. I work with dream time a lot. I do not do smoking mirror Toltec dream time work. I do my own dream time work. When you go and work with another uh, platform, you have to completely understand and accept their teachings and their work as inclusive for them. It doesn't matter how you do it in your normal life. You have to just fully immerse yourself in their study and accept their reality. If you do that, you're going to get amazing things come of it. If you resist it or say things like, my shirt is going crazy. Sorry. Like I said, I was gardening all day and forgot, to, didn't have time to change. But if you fully immerse yourself as though you want to write a research paper on this, whether you believe it or not for yourself, you have to understand this is the way it is. And if you do that, magical doors open. So I went and I got like a small obsidian disc, you know, like, um, like this size that I could fit in my palm. And um, I got this book and I read this book and it really blew my mind. Now I'm not a Toltec dream time student but you don't have to be like a student in order to appreciate and study. In this, they talk about specific styles and techniques of dream work. They talk about dreaming for self and dreaming for 3D. They talk about shamans attacking each other in dreams. If you're a shaman and you're asleep and dreaming and another shaman comes in your dreams and they want to fight you, you had better win. And excuse me one moment. Yeah. It's on her. It's on her. Right there. That's okay. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Let's see. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
<laughs> Time to take the dog for a walk, and she'd rather be here on TV with you dogs. Sorry about that interruption. <laughs> so, um, if and I know numerous shamans who have shared stories about this. If a shaman comes and attacks you in your sleep, you had better be ready to defend yourself or you could die in your sleep. And here's the thing. I've never heard of female shamans attacking anyone in their sleep unless a sh female shaman is totally corrupt or insane or has become a marionette under the authority of a male shaman. But I know a lot of male shamans enjoy doing this kind of a bravado sort of thing. But it's serious stuff. So if you go into shamanic dream time work, really respect it. It's very, very powerful. And they talk about the different animal spirits that come to you. So I was reading this book and, um, oh, look, here's a feather. So I'm reading the book and I'm sitting on a veranda in the country and um i was you know back when i was on the road traveling a lot and i felt the need to put the book down and take a break and meditate at that moment um an owl flew past and like was circling around and grabbed a little mouse or something some small mammal and went back to the trees i'm like wow that's amazing that's an amazing thing to see and then, okay, Leah, we'll catch you uh, another time. Sorry to miss you now, but that's the nice thing about Facebook. So then I cracked the book open. So I went into meditation. And um, one of the guides I normally don't like working with because he's terrifying, but he shows up when I don't do the work I'm supposed to do. He's like, like when you get sent to the principal's office for spirit work, he showed up and um, he kind of told me off in his very severe way. And he said, you need to honor the owl and the bat. You need to work with them. They will show you the way. I was like, well, okay. Um, I love owls. I love bats. Okay. And then I like, he left and I went back and I cracked open the book. And it's like the next thing was bat totem and owl totem on the next page. Like I flipped the page, there it is, bat totem, owl totem. I'm like, wow, okay. So here's the thing. Re I recommend you read this. It's very, very specific and technical, although brilliant, like brilliantly written. So interesting. And um, I recommend you read it, but understand if you wish to go ahead and practice Toltec dream time as a specific um, meditation and form and shamanic practice form, you will want to work with someone uh, who is professional with that. Or make sure you're not considered someone with bravado that other shamans want to attack. So one of the things you do and um, there we go, is you look into the mirror and as you see, wait, where am I? You see my face, it's all in shadows. Just as when we work with, you know, the crystal ball. Oh my God, that's so heavy. I shouldn't have lifted that up. You let your eyes space out. Think of like Alice in the looking glass. And you look in the mirror, there are different techniques you can do. And this is the same for um, both forms of mirror work we're gonna do. And um, actually, I mean, since most of you don't have obsidian at home, don't worry, we're gonna be using our regular mirror, but in the dim light, once we turn the lights down, it's sort of six to one, half dozen the other on which kind of mirror you use, it'll be, you know, uh, the same effect. You look in the mirror, let your eyes space out. And the different techniques you can do are you can invite a dream that you had that you know is powerfully connected for you to come and show itself. Or you can ask your animal spirit guide to come and take you and take you on a journey somewhere. 
Um, and it doesn't have to be your specific animal spirit guide. It can be any animal spirit guide. Um, I know shamans who have their animal spirit guides for their awake world and animal spirit guides for their dream world and their different spirit guides. Um, and in this book, again, they talk about the different spirit guides. I have other books on smoking mirror. Feathered Serpent and Smoking Mirror is really good. It's more of an anthropological research. And let's see. Aboriginal Men of High Degree. This is uh, Australian, obviously. But there's a lot that's comparable. It's very interesting. There's a lot that's comparable. If you read, like, the uh, Toltec Secret, and you read this in a follow-up, you'll go, oh my God, totally different continents, very, very similar uh, concepts. Um, this is a children's book, The Smoking Mirror. It's a children's book series, but I'll tell you, whoever, you know, this has a lot of real stuff in it. Very, very good stuff. Uh, Sandra Ingerman's Soul Retrieval book. Uh, which is, of course, uh, North American shamanic practice. Although she goes into actually soul retrieval globally, all, you know, and through history. So it's a fascinating book. And while soul retrieval and smoking mirror are not quite the same, there's so much overlap of information that you'll find um, really good stuff. And... Um, um, so if you're working with like Central and South America, you're going to do a lot of research on like the Toltec, the Aztec, the Mayan, and the Inca. They are completely different cultures, different civilizations, different practices. But this book, Spirit of the Shower, which is, um, these are people who uh, still live indigenously. And um, there's a lot of great information here about uh, uh, how this sort of work is incorporated in 3D life as opposed to, um, you know, researching how things were done way back when. And, um, for me, sometimes when I'm doing smoking mirror work, I will team it with my chumpy stones. For any of you who don't know what chumpy stones are, this is Inca. And um, Smoking mirror can also be uh, done in the Inca. It is, um, that's a whole other kit and caboodle. But sometimes when I work with my chumpy stones, I'll start with that to get everything going. And then I'll go into the smoking mirror for the grand finale. And um, also the return of the bird tribes. This is more like global slash North American. But there's a lot of information in here that works really, really well with mirror work you do. Um, if you don't have obsidian and you really want to do the work, you can pick like um, sort of a picture. This one has like a lot of glitter on it. It's actually a portrait of my soul. This uh, uh, an amazing soul portrait artist uh, gave this to me, and um, this is how he sees my soul. There's a lot of glitter in here. But you could look at something, uh, a picture that's, you know, sort of impressionistic or modern art and let your eyes unfocus. And that can work as well as a smoking mirror. Um, you know, like it's not giving the same reflection, but it gives you the chance to sort of go into a dreamlike hypnotic state. Um, I also have a smoking mirror ball that um, I, there we go. look, at that. that's so cute. There's my little computer screen in the middle of it. Um, so we are going to get ready and do a little smoking mirror work. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, also like black stones, like riverbed stones, those even though they're not, if you get experience with smoking mirror work, 
then you can use these and hold them in your palm and they work just as well but i wouldn't start with them okay so what we're going to do is we're going to get into a meditative state and i want each of you to go to a place where you have a mirror um i think you can also use your like you have a TV screen and it's turned off, you can look there. You want to have the lights a little bit dim. Um, not necessary, but it just helps your mind not be quite so uh, 3D world, linear thinking focused. I'm going to dim my lights a little bit. There we go. And it's reflecting light to you guys. Okay. So if you have a bathroom, you can go in the bathroom and light a candle. Um, you can use any kind of mirror you have, a small mirror, you know, or a mirror in a beautiful frame big mirror it doesn't really matter but you'll notice that when i look in my smoking mirror if you are looking in your mirror with dim light it's not that much different um so at this point i imagine a number of you are with your laptop or you know cell phone or tablet in your bathroom with um you know a candle or something or it so what you want to do is look in the mirror connect with the you in the mirror we're not going to do the meditation yet we're doing an exercise so don't worry about protection. Connect with the you in the mirror. And here's the thing. When you look in the mirror, you're looking at yourself, but you are also looking into another place. It's not just a reflection of you. It's a portal, an opening. Most people only make use of this portal as a door closed to reflect back. But you can open this portal and allow it to open to dreams, dimensions, memories. So take a moment, invite the portal to open. Invite this mirror you're looking at to not just be a reflection, but an open doorway where there is something, somewhere, someone beyond. Invite your eyes to space out. And say to your mirror, I recognize the possibility that with my permission, this portal can open and share knowledge, wisdom, and secrets with me. Mm -hmm. 
now step away from the mirror. You can have your eyes open or closed. It's all good. Open, spaced out, closed. But invite all the energy in your body to flow down through your body, through your legs, down through your feet, deep into earth. Invite your feet to relax and open so all the energy can flow through. You'll notice quite naturally, instinctively, the top of your head automatically opens up. And all of the beautiful divine love of the cosmic angels, the universe, source, your soul flow in through the top of your head filling your body, flowing through your body, down through your legs, through your feet, deep into earth. If the top of your head feels any pressure or pain, acknowledge it, give it permission to resolve itself. It is very natural when we open up that some parts of our body are taken by surprise and they sort of go, wait, wait, we need to protect. It's not necessary. Thank any pain, pressure, distress. Thank it for caring so much about you and your well being that it wants to take care of you and protect you. Give it permission to resolve and release on its own. All of the energy that flows in through the top of your head, which is beginning to feel light and airy, flows through your body, deep into earth. Let the energy flow through. Any blocks or pain, acknowledge them, thank them, give them permission to release. And now I want you to call out to your soul, and to your guardian angel, and to your soul family. Whether you know who they are or not doesn't matter because they know who you are. Call out, soul, guardian angel, my soul family. I call to you to protect me, to watch over me, to help feed me whatever it is I need and to protect me from anything I don't need. You are my gatekeepers, my champions, and you will help me to receive the messages that I need in this time. You will send away anything and anyone that does not most benefit my best and healthiest, most joyous state of well-being and my reception of the messages I actually need. And you will guide the messages I need and the energies and the frequencies and connections I need in this time to help me receive the messages and the love and the healing. So be it. Beautiful. Now look at your mirror again. I'm using my smoky mirror. 
but it doesn't matter what mirror you use, just keep the lights dim. Take a minute to look at your reflection. And while you're looking at your reflection with spaced out eyes, let your attention be beyond your reflection. Keeping your eyes spaced out, invite the portals to open. Invite the gateways to open. You are beautifully protected. As you are looking at your mirror, you may notice that your face is changing a little bit. It may not look quite like your face. Whatever your face becomes, you'll notice the more you are spaced out, the more you will actually see. The more you are open and receptive, the more information you will receive. Allow yourself to connect with whatever your face becomes. Whatever you receive, accept it. You can ask questions. Who are you? Why are you here for me? What message do you wish to share? Whatever you receive, Acknowledge and accept it. Invite the space that is behind your body to expand and become whatever it wishes to represent. Remember, this is dream time. You may have an animal spirit guide come forward and talk with you, or you may find yourself in a different place entirely. You may receive messages in your head, in the mirror, or as downloads. Take a few minutes. And just relax with this.
and slowly refocus your eyes. Take a moment to just cover your eyes with your hands. Just to sort of rebalance your eyes and the energy. And just meditate on whatever vision or message or connection you just had while you're allowing your hands energy to flow into your eyes your closed eyes, give them a little bit of a break. Ooh. Well, that was something for me. I hope that you guys had an interesting experience there. When you go to sleep tonight, invite the dream time to come and reconnect with you. We're going to do one more dream time exercise where you look in the mirror and ask your animal spirit totem. This is not your everyday totem. This is your dream time totem. And it can be your totem of the moment or your lifelong totem. It doesn't matter. So totally open, invite your animal totem to come and be with you. Whatever animal comes forward, completely accept it. So again, with the lights dim, looking in your mirror, look at your mirror, look in your eyes, invite the portal of the mirror to open up and reveal to you whatever magical mysteries and interdimensional gateways are there. Just look in your eyes, space out, and ask an animal totem, an animal spirit guide, to present themselves to you and whatever message they have to share why this animal totem is with you. So space out. You may find your face changing shape a few times before the totem comes in. The more you relax, open and allow, the easier the information can flow. Whatever you receive, Fully accept it.
ask if there's any further messages. And also, if you wish, you can invite this process to continue in your sleep. Right. Now return to us. Hi. <laughs> We're going to move on to another meditation practice. So give yourself a little stretch. I hope that was useful for you guys. Um, and remember, in shamanic practice, in Toltec practice, each animal has a resonance, a purpose that it works with. You must honor every one of them. Do not turn any animal guide away because they're coming to you in truth. I had a woman once who was very upset because she went in meditation and um, she said it was very dark when we were doing shares. It was in a group. Everyone was sharing. I was flying with an eagle. I was swimming. With, I was doing this. I was doing that. She said it was black. It was pitch black. And there was this worm there. And I knew the worm was like keeping me stuck there. And so I couldn't find my guide. So finally I squashed the worm and I was stuck in black. And I was like, oh my God. Ooh, fire elemental came to visit. That is so awesome. So I said to this woman, the worm was your animal spirit guide, your animal totem. She was really like pissed off a worm. And I was like, lady, the worm is the most sacred of all animals. The worm exists only for service. It is the most divine. The worm, everything the worm does benefits the planet, benefits others. And anyway, I told her all about the worm, but you can look up the worm. And I said, so what is going on in your life that when your power comes to you and presents itself to you, the most sacred divine power, you feel the need to squash it. So, you know, she burst into tears and that started her on a path of personal evolution, obviously. <laughs> um, but whatever animal comes to you, if you feel it's a disrespectful animal, look the animal up and you'll go, oh, that's why this animal. You know, she had disrespected the earthworm because she thought it was nothing. And it's like the best, so the most divine, the most sacred. Um, and that's one of the problems with sacred people. We're often too humble and then we uh, put ourselves down and squash ourselves up. So whatever comes to you, accept it in the moment and then look it up. If you don't know, you know, why this animal? You can find out later. You go, well, that makes sense. Um, sometimes you get an animal that's with you for the moment to help you get to where you need to be for the next animal to show up. Not every animal is your lifelong animal. Okay. So now we are going to do one more exercise. Uh, this book, The Art of Black Mirror Scrying, I came upon it by accident. I thought, oh, it's going to be some more smoking mirror. So I got it and I'm reading. I'm like, no, this is not smoking mirror. This is actually um, a fascinating book. I absolutely love it. Uh, Rosemary Ellen Gilley, who is a 
extraordinary lady. I, I just, you know, her, her writings are amazing. Her teachings are amazing. Um, uh, so she had, had said the cyclomantium. I think I called it a phantasmagoria earlier. Sorry. It's a cyclomantium is something that anyone can build. You can go into a closet, empty it out. Uh, most people will take like a very comfortable chair and cut off the legs, like an easy chair, not an easy chair, like an overstuffed chair and cut off the legs. So you're sitting a little low and you put a full length mirror on the other wall. So you're facing a full length mirror, but it's like, because you're sitting on the floor, you don't see your body. You put it up so that, um, that's why they put the legs down so you don't have to put the mirror up so high. A large mirror that you don't see yourself reflected at all. You're below it and, or you can see your face. Some people will do the face on up and you just sit there in a dim light and you space out you can do any kind of meditation call anyone you want to you um you can go in with a preset that you want to talk with someone specific either a person who passed or an angel or you know or you can go in and you can just call out and you look at the mirror and you space out plan on being in there for like an hour so that way you're not like where is it where is it where is it if you preset you're an hour but what you'll probably find is if you set your timer for an hour, it will go off and you're like, what? That was only a few minutes. Um, but don't go in with any preconceived notions. Go in fully open. And this is why a bathroom mirror with, if you get like a desk lamp and turn it so it's like almost touch, put it on the floor. And if it's like one of the ones that has a malleable arm, so you can do it so it's almost touching the floor and put it behind you, especially if you have like a red light bulb, that's like the best. But if not, light a candle and look in your mirror so that it's like head level or above. So you can see the mirror, but you're not seeing your whole body. And if you practice it a lot, you get to the point where you can see your whole body, but you're like, used to it so it's not a big deal or you can take a smaller mirror and hang it so that um i'll do it so that like in this one it has like little birds on it i'll do it so my eyes are right here around the bird level um so i'm not really seeing myself or i'll just look at my whole body and i'll space out i'm so used to ignoring my body anyway um and you space out, we've already set our protection, you know, so you are well protected and we're very grounded and we're open up to the divine and invite anyone. You can ask for someone specific, but you may not get whom you ask for. Um, or you may just open up and say, whomever has a message for me, who is coming in love and peace, who will bring information that is good for me to know, or a connection that's good for me, please come forward and just space out at the mirror. Um, this is a good time for practicing like mindfulness meditation, you know, Vipassana meditation where you're just very focused on the moment without thinking about time, without thinking words or anything, just like being one with the moment and open and seeing what comes forward. What might come forward will be, you'll see it in the mirror or you might get stuff in your head or later when you go to sleep, things might be coming in more for you. So uh, if you guys are ready, we're going to take a few minutes, get yourself comfortable, look in the mirror, let the lights be dim, and let yourself space out while you're looking in the mirror. 
and just see what comes in. If you have anyone you want to invite, feel welcome to invite them. But then graciously accept whomever or whatever comes in. If there's someone you want to speak to, you may get, like, say, someone you love who passed. You may be longing for them so much that it's interrupting their ability to come in. So you might get an angel coming in or an animal. And what they you know by working with them you become a little more calm and neutral and then that might open you up for the person you wanted to come in so just or it might not you know again you have to be practice at this a little bit so um just receive whatever comes in and know that every step takes you towards becoming more open for having you know more experiences okay so look in your mirror. And let your eyes kind of space out. You want the light to be dim, like candlelight level. You are grounded to earth. And your crown chakra is open. All of your energy is protected by your soul, your guardian angel, your guides, your soul family. You are safe and protected. And just space out at the mirror and receive whatever comes in. Feel welcome to talk with whomever or whatever you are experiencing.
invite the space around you to open up and invite messages to flow directly into your brain. Very gently, pull yourself back into the here and now. Thank your vision, thank your guides. Invite your energy to return to your body. Give yourself a little bit of movement. Get everything reestablished. Invite your soul and your guides to keep watching over you. Make sure that you are safe and protected all through the rest of the evening and through the night while you're dreaming. There we go. Hi, everyone. I hope that was interesting for you. Again, that was really a very basic taste of working with mirrors, but um, it can be a really powerful tool for opening up and receiving messages. If you, uh, one technique I love to do is sit as we did And ask, you know, your guardian angel to show themselves to you. I mean, you guys can do that. We're going to uh, say goodnight in a moment. But if you want to go back in, look in the mirror, look at your face with candlelight going. And ask your guardian angel to come and take over your face. If you have any past lives you feel connected with, have them take over your face. We have time to do that. So, you'd like, let yourself feel spacey again. Look in your mirror. And this time you're looking directly at your face with the darkened light. Space out your eyes. Just be totally unfazed. We remain grounded. Crown chakras open. Your guardian angel is always with you through every moment of your life. Call to your guardian angel to flow in and be one with you. You may feel your guardian angel in your body you may feel like you have wings growing in your back or your guardian angel may just be coating your body with like an 
ectoplasm or a projection. Just invite your guardian angel to be one with you in whatever way it works. Look in the mirror, spaced out. And invite your angel's re energy, your angel's essence to represent in the reflection. Open all your senses to whatever comes in. Allow yourself to feel, to have emotions, to hear thoughts or music, to have memories pop up. Whatever comes through, welcome it. And again, put your hands up to your eyes. Give them a little energy. Move your body a little bit. Give yourself a little hug. You guys, that was amazing. I hope you had a good time connecting with mirror messages. I encourage you to continue this. I encourage you to keep practicing. Um, you know, take a look at some of these books I shared and 
like I said, I the specific techniques, if you're not trained on them, can be very dangerous. That's why we kept it very, very general and generic today. But, you know, we can always go into a deeper course on this if you guys want um, in the future. But like I said, the Toltec secret, totally recommend if you're into mirror work and the art of black mirror scrying. I totally recommend reading these books. These are the ones that I can do all kinds of research. These ones have like all the information that you pick up little bits here and there compacted in these. Um, okay, so, oh, I'm glad that was cool. <laughs> um, so before I log off, I'll tell you, um, Saturday, 11 a.m., we're doing heart chakra work. That's going to be awesome because we're going to work with the three heart centers, the heart chakra, your physical heart, and your cosmic heart, and we're going to get them doing all kinds of cool stuff. And then Sunday, I'll, I posted the event. I'll post it again on my Facebook wall. I and a few other um, psychic mediums and seers are doing a, a free workshop on Zoom. So you have to register to get the link. There's going to be about 100 people online. Uh, Joyce, it's my pleasure. Thank you. There's going to be about 100 people attending. And we're doing a free workshop um, about finding love in your daily life at this moment, finding love, like finding your power through love. Um, and since a lot of us uh, right now, if we want to heal the planet, if we want to get through our quarantine days happy, love is the most powerful force we can be working with. So um, I'll put the link on here also, but um, like I said, this weekend, two free programs that we're offering. And I hope I will see you there because also if you're doing the black mirror scrying or the smoky mirror and you bring in the power of love, heart chakra on Saturday, Sunday, applying love to the work you're doing in your life, it'll be good. <laughs> so thank you guys. Thank you. I love you guys. And I just, I appreciate you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And remember when you go to bed tonight, invite your mirror work to come with you and bring you in your dream state. If you want, when you go and you're brushing your teeth before bed, Maybe turn out the lights and space out against the mirror a little bit so that you can carry, you know, revitalize that energy. That's something I like to do. Now you know one of my secrets. Okay. Thank you. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.